Hi, good morning, guys. Hope you guys are doing fine. Welcome to this information session on the most affordable and the newest BSC in Trinidad and Tobago. My name is Aaron Narius, and I'll be taking you through the session this morning. So let us begin. As I said before, we, this is an information session on the BSC IT program. And with us today, well, we have Ravi Raghunath. He's currently out of the country, but this is one of your most go-to guy, right? He is one of your, will be one of your lecturers, and he's also the executive director of CTS College. This is his number. Well, unfortunately, he's out of the country right now. He's returning on Monday, but you can call him if you like. And this is his email address. And this is my name. My name is Aaron Narius. I'm the program manager of the BSC IT. This is my number and my email address. And you can call me if you like. Um, you can email me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And also with, with us as well in the team, there's Sanjeev Nunu, who is the program administrator. This is his number and his email address, right? So this is, you can take a screenshot if you like, or I'm gonna email this presentation afterwards if you like to get there as well. But this is our contact numbers. You can easily reach us at any time. We um, want us probably not sure o'clock anymore, right? Also, we have a group email, which is bsc at ctscollege.com. So you can reach us at this email address as well, right? So, I have a few questions today, right? And I would love it if you guys unmute your mics and, and give me an answer. It's not a formal test, right? No problem with it, I'll email it to you. So I have one question, like, why was the mobile glass, mobile phone wearing glasses? Can anybody answer? You can put it up in the chat if you like. Why was the mobile phone wearing glasses? Anyone? So the mobile phone is wearing glasses because he lost all his contacts, right? The next one might be a bit easier, right? So let's move on. So what kind of computer sings the best? Anybody have an answer for that? Adele? Yes, it's Adele. She's and she says hello, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. One last question. So one last question. Why did a PowerPoint presentation decide to cross the road? It's very familiar with the chicken, but it's a bit different. Anybody here? You can put up in the chat if you like as well, right? They get the point across. Very close. It's not the answer I'm looking for, but that, that's a really good um, answer. To get to the other slide? Yes, to get to the other slide. Thank you so much, Justin. Awesome. So thank you so much, guys, for your interaction. And let's move on, right? So. I want to ask you again, well, you can unmute your mics now and, and speak if you like. Why study a BSc? You don't have to be IT, it um, could be anything else, but why would I want to study a BSc, a Bachelor's of Science or any degree that you like? What is your goal in studying this degree? Anyone? Feel free to unmute, All right? Danielle says to provide job opportunities, yes, to make yourself more marketable. Could trade up in the chat. Sorry, go ahead. Affordability. Affordability. Yeah. What do you mean by affordability? Uh, it seems to be cheaper than somebody competition. And I mean, also... as to study at BSc at CTS College, you mean? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that feedback, Dover. Yes, it's affordability. <laughs> Start a new career part, yes. Because you like the, the area of study, yes. You like to learn more personal development. I love all the uh, answers I'm getting so far. Awesome. For better job opportunity, yes, that's correct. To make yourself more marketable. 
So we have asked uh, quite a bit of motor students on this question, and here are some of the most popular responses. So one, people do it for promotion, right? For career change, if someone said that in, 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 the, in, the, in the chat. For increasing salary, because you know we, we all want more money and flour went up, so we need a bit more money to buy our bread and stuff, right? So some persons do the degree to start and grow their own business. We actually had a dentist that came in. He actually finished his studies and he started an IT um, business on his side. And he came under this degree just to um, go with his, um, just to continue with his, my thing stuck. All right, guys, you hearing me? My computer just froze for a bit. Okay, cool. So personal achievement. We had a 70 year old father who put his kids through university and he just did it because he just wanted to get that personal achievement of having a degree. And then it's very practical, even practical experience in the, in the field and to also person set to enhance employability or your marketable to be more marketable. So these were the answers that most students gave, right? So I want to present a case study for you guys. So when you look at the OJT salary for persons who just came out of CSEC, these are the, 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 the salaries based on OJT. So persons who just came out of CSEC, they get roughly about $3,000. Um, when they came out of CAPE, they get roughly about $4,400. But look at a mass, a bachelor's degree, sorry. You get about $7,500, right? So look at the difference between CSEC, CAPE, and look at the degree. So my question is, how much more would you earn for, for doing a BSc versus a CXE? So look at the screen there, you'll see you have a roughly $45,000, 45, $100 more from going from a, a, a bachelor's to from your CXE. And how much will you earn in one year? You earn around $54,000. Actually, remember this figure because later on we go show you how investing in yourself and by just doing this degree, you can actually get a return on the investment within a year. And how much more you would, would you would you, um, get over 40 years if you work 40 years? It's around $2 million. You can imagine what you could do with $2 million, all right? Someone's not seeing my screen. Is everyone seeing my screen? Yeah, so we've seen the screen. Okay, cool. Yes, no problem. So jobs of tomorrow. So we, we did our real research on jobs of tomorrow with from the World Economic Forum. And we noticed that some of the jobs that are decreasing in demand are jobs like data entry clerks and the jobs that are increasing in demand are like data analysts and scientists. If you look at one here particularly, jobs that are in decrease are accountants and auditors. A uh, job that increasing in demand are digital marketing and specialty and strategy specialists. So we notice that technology is creeping in in all areas and all sectors of the job market. And according to the World Economic Forum, the workforce has, has, is automating and displacing about 85 million jobs in the next five years, right? And then COVID 19 um, caused a double recession, um, double, hemi, double um, disruption, right? So that means it's even going to even be even faster than five years. So companies are adopting to technologies with 43% of business surveyed indicated that they are set to reduce their workforce because of technology integration. And I wanna show you some of these integrations right now, right? So before COVID, we didn't have much uh, applications locally, but now we do have Massey stores. We do have a KFC app right now, and we do have a T um, Train on Tobago um, police service app as well. So with these now, you can actually order groceries online. You can actually order your KFC um, meals online as well from your phone. And you can even report something that's happening in your neighborhood on the app as well. So you can see even right here locally that um, businesses are adopting technology. So I have one practical, and I want to introduce this practical early because our the BSC IT is very practical, right? There's a well-known pharmacy have an application 
right? So this is one of their feedback in the application. We are, we are pro to provide a solution for them using technology. So the, the, the feedback is this app is useless. More work is needed. It doesn't select the closest pharmacy and I can't order online. And there is no updates deals on the app. So let's look at the first two things. The, the, it doesn't select the closest pharmacy, right? And I can't order, order online. So what do you do you guys think could pro, um, solve this solution, solve this problem? Any IT related, technology related solution? Let me hear you guys. Anyone? Could trade up in the chat if you like to as well. Location mapping of stores. I will repeat, right? So we have a use case, a, a, a practicals um, here right now. You want to develop a solution. No problem, Daniel. We all want, want to develop a solution for this well-known pharmacy that um, the two problems are it doesn't select the closest pharmacy and I can't order online. You could integrate your app with Google Maps. Yes, you can. Find the closest um, pharm pharmacy near you. That's excellent, yes. Anyone else? They could update the app by putting location for customers to select. Yes, that's awesome. E-commerce solutions, yes. I love that, Joel. And this is basically what we'll be doing in the degree as well, right? Update the app often, yeah. <laughs> That will work too as well. Online payment system, yes. I love what the, I love the answers. Come on. So you guys basically hit the hit the nail on the head already. The pharmacists can learn what customers want. Yes. Example: online shopping. Yes. Online delivery. Yes. Love it. Love it. Online appointments. Yes. So one solution is, and you guys already said it. Use a mobile GPS location to find user location. And then you could also find the closest super farm or, or well-known farm using user's location, right? And then from there, implement an e-commerce application solution. So as simple as that, we solve the, solu we solve the problem with I technical, um, technology solutions. Thank you so much, guys. So moving on, why study with the University of Bedfordshire? So we partner with the University of Bedfordshire to offer this degree locally. Right. So about the University of Bedfordshire, they have a history that goes back a hundred years. So they have more than a hundred years in education. They have more than twenty thousand students from all over the world, from one hundred and twenty countries, and they have many campuses, which 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 um five physical campuses and so much, and then they can reach so much more students online. Right. They partner with China, Middle East, Europe, so. East Asia, and right in Trinidad, our partners as well. They are ranked in the top six of the best universities in the world. And in 2013, they have won the coveted Queen's Anniversary Prize, which is the highest form of national recognition in the UK, right? So they have a rich history and, one of the, and they are one of the best in the world. So this is a little about the University of Bedfordshire that when you sign up, you'll be a, a student of CTS College and you'll be a student of University of Bedfordshire. Right, so then why study at CTS College, right? So before I continue, is there anyone new to CTS College? Which means once I start this program, you'll be a new student to CTS College. You have never did anything in the past with us. So you can still, you can raise your hand if you like to use the Yes, I see that, and yes, I see the other hand. It's so good to have new students to experience the CTS experience. Thank you guys so much for your feedback. So about us. So CTS College, first of all, we are a private institution. We have over 22 years in the education industry. We are ACTT recognized. And to my knowledge, we are the only school in Trinidad that offers from preschool all the way up to master's degree. So we have a full-time primary school, preschool, a full-time primary school, a full-time secondary school as well. And then we have our bachelor's degrees and master's degree. And we are looking into a doctoral program as well. 
So apart from these, we have a wide range of professional development and certification programs as well. So basically we, 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 are, we offer for you, even in the future for your kids as well, so they could go through their whole life with CTS College. So our experience in delivering, or oh, before I get to that, we have a page here of basically of our bragging rights. So we won, we won a, a few uh, among, among our awards. So at our world prize, as you can see there in the ABE, we, there's our world prize is won, or top paper is awarded to a student who got the highest mark in that program. Just as we celebrate with students who celebrate the highest in CSEC, CAPE, and others. So in ABE program, we have 106 ABE world prizes, which means people who did ABE with us got the highest in the world, 106 students, right? And ABE is offered in over 30 countries and over 100 other schools as well in those countries. And guess what? We have won the record for the most prize won in, an, in a semester. So we have won 13 world prizes in one semester, which was a record at ABE. So in one of our semesters here in CTS, we have won 13 world prizes, which means 13 persons at CTS got the highest in the world. We also won two ABMA awards, right? And we also won 11 ACTT awards. So ACTT, which is the Accreditation Council of Children and Tobago, they normally host a quite awards, which means is the tertiary education awards, quality in tertiary education awards, but to budget and other constraints, they stop having these awards, right? But when they had these awards, CTS College won more awards than other schools in Trinidad. So we have won awards in three categories. So sorry, we have won six awards in student support, which is what which is what we'll be very proud of. We have also won um, three awards in excellence for an establishment with quality management system. And we also won two in excellence in teaching and learning. So these are some of our awards that we have won over the years and we are very proud of it. So experience in delivering uh, BSC IT. So over 15 years now, we have experience in delivering a BSC program. Our pass rate are over 90% per module. We have over 2,000 applications and over 1,700 um, BSC graduates with 500 first class honors. This this right now have to update because we are we won a few a few students this year got first class honors as well, right? So this number needs to update. And graduates are employed in various sectors around in Trinidad, different industries at different levels. We will also have a a, a student who is in um, Chicago. He's an IT manager as well. So. I want to show you guys the average pass rate of our module. So last semester, this is our, um, <clears throat> can you guys see the table properly? So look, it looked a little bit fuzzy on my screen. So this is our yeah, last semester. Yes, we can help. It, can't, it's can't it looks a bit fuzzy, but yeah, it's yeah. iteratable. Okay. So this is our last semester, I'll read it out for you. So in, in, one of, in most of our units, we have 96% pass rate. This unit, we have a 99% pass rate. In these two units, which is level five, we have 95 and 92%. Um, in level six, we all, in level six, they are all 100% um, students pass, which in overall for this semester is about 98% um, of student pass. So when we sp speak about our pass rate is, uh, is 90 and uh, above, from last semester, you can see our pass rate for all our semester, um, units for last semester. So we come into the features of the BSc in, um, from the University of Bedfordshire, right? So when we were looking for a program to start in, in BSc in ID, we, we look for, we look at students, what they want, and even employers, what they require from students, right? So student wants that program that is accredited, which means they can work anywhere in the world with the program. As I said before, we have a student in um, Chicago, and we have a student also in Barbados. He's working in the United Nations. So basically, with this degree, you can work anywhere in the world, right? Some students have to travel for work and other related reasons, so they wanted a program that can be accessible anywhere in the world. 
So this program is globally accessible. Employers wanted a program that was practical in, in IT. So they wanted to hire people with skills and they could apply the theory instead of just knowing body theory. So this program is very hands-on. For students, if I ask you, if, do you want a degree tomorrow? Many of you will say yes. Is not so? But unfortunately, it's not that fast, but we do have the fastest accelerated program in Trinidad and Tobago. And also, as someone said before, we have the most affordable program as well. So I'll get to all these points a little later, but this in a, in a nutshell, this is about the, the, how the features of the PSE from the University of Bedfordshire. So fully accredited. So this program is fully accredited by two bodies. One is in the UK, which is accredited, is accredited by the Quality Assurance for Higher Learning from the UK. It's an independent body that checks on standards and quality in the UK higher education. Right, so QAA basically tells the government on applications for degree and award um, universities to be called a university because you can't just open a school and say, I'm a university. They need to go through um, the quality assurance agency and get approved. Also the university, the program is ACT recognized, which means you can do it here in Trinidad and you'll be awarded the, the, the program from the University of Bedfordshire, right? Also with the program, it's a transnational program, right? So we as well need to meet up with some of the quality from University of Bedfordshire. So all the marketing program, a marketing and promotion is approved by university. So we can't do our own marketing and promotion. We need to get approval from university. All admissions must be approved by university. So all applications are sent to university and they are reviewed and approved. All our lecturers are approved by university. All the teaching material comes from university, but we are allowed to modify the material to suit our lecturing style. All assignments, either exam, assignment, presentation, written reports, are sent and marked by the university. And they do annual audits just to make sure we are in check with everything that they required and they gave us continual feedback and review as well. So this is a bit of the national, transnational quality of the program. So everything is passed through the University of Bedfordshire. I see someone hands up, some someone hands up. Are your hand up from before or do you have a question? If not, no problem. So once you join this program, you'll be getting a certificate from the University of, University of Bedfordshire. And this is my certificate from February on. I just finished the program, right? So there's no CTS college on this certificate. So you can see that University of Bedfordshire, I certify that my name, Aaron Kiel Norris, have been awarded a degree, Bachelor of Science with Honors First Class in Information Technology, right? So just to note, you'll be getting a certificate from the University of Bedfordshire. So globally accessible, with, with students from all over the world, over 20,000 students from 20, 120 countries, they needed, they have a platform called Brio that everyone could access any part of the world once they have internet access. As I said before, they have educational partners in China, Middle East, Europe, South Asia, I even turned that and I believe Guyana as well. As I said just now before, they have an online learning environment, which is, which is Brio. This is where you submit all your assignments, you get your, your, your books and the other material from. That was Student Information Desk has opened 24 seven to support students from anywhere around the world. And CTS College now, we provide a Google Share Drive with all lecture recordings, books and material as well. So most of the stuff from Brio, actually everything from Brio, uh, in our local drives as well, our share drive. So I just want to go across to our share drive to show you a bit on our share drive. So everybody can see my screen, right? Just making sure. Awesome. Yes, sir. So this is our share drive and you'll be given access to our share drive as soon as you register and start the program. And as you can see, we don't give you access to level four alone. 
all level five alone, all level six alone, we'll be giving you access to all the levels at the start. So even if, if you start at level four, you can have access to level five and six. And even if you start at level six, and you probably want to go back and learn something at level four, you can have the option to go in level four and, and look through and learn as well. So will you be using eBooks? Yes, we will be using eBooks and I'll show you where the eBooks are on our share drive. So in level four, there are four modules. All right, this is a shortcut for um, supporting information, but there are four modules here. And if I go to computer system structure, you can see you have assessments from past semesters. And you have samples of assignments from before. So what we do, we take the, the best of the assignments from last semester, or even each semester, right? And you can see an example of what is a good assignment and what is required. So it's not to copy and paste, but it's just to see, okay, I'm doing my assignments. And I could now look back and see, okay, cool, I'm missing this, I'm missing this table, I need this information. And it's just a guiding point to show you what the university requires. And you can see we have samples from previous semesters from 2020 come forward. So someone asks about books. These are the books for the, 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 the program, the, this module and you can easily access it right here, right? So these books were given to us through the University on Brio. So we just downloaded to, to make it a bit more reachable for everyone. Also, if you go to online recordings, you have recordings from this semester, which is, well, last semester. So you have all the recordings. So you can even, at the study semester, you could actually come in here and look through the recordings and even get ahead on your work and your assignments. And as I said before, right, as I said before, you have access to all the levels. So in level five, there are also four modules and the layout are almost identical. User experience, you have your books for user experience, UXD and assessments as well. Also, as I'm, I'm, as I'm right here, we also give you supporting information, aspects about how to write um, academic writing, how to write because you can't use um, certain um, languages and certain stuff in your, um, basically broken languages in your reports, how to access your email, we have also our time and schedule. We can show you all these, these schedules are coming up for the semester. So you can plan and get ahead. Get code of conduct, have a referencing, mitigation form. So you have a whole bunch of stuff, even some software and stuff as well. So you have a whole, you have access to a lot of stuff in our share drive. And we believe that um, access is made available for you so you can learn, it makes no sense. Um, keeping away any information from you guys. So even if, if you start at a higher level and you want to go back and learn, you can go back and learn, All right? So any questions about our share drive, anything? No problem. You have a question, I see a hand up. Okay, so back to our presentation. So. The, the BSc is very practical, which you are solving solution, you are solving problems, sorry. So you learn about the, the, okay, thank you so much, Joel. You learn about all the, <clears throat> can we download from the, yes, you can download from the drive, but even when you finish the program, you you'd still have access to the drive. So it, it, it makes no sense downloading anything and keep taking out space on your system, right? Email, if you leave the program and it's it's like five years from now, you, you will still have access to the drive. So the, the degree is very hands-on. You'll be developing solutions for problems. In level four and five, you're given a problem to, to solve, but in level six, you have to look for a solution. It could be right here in Trinidad or anything globally. 
but they 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 recommend that you look around in Trinidad, right at home, and look for any any problem that you may want to provide a solution for, right? So let me show you one of my um, assignments. In my assignment, I looked at um, the public transportation and I, I recommended an Internet of Things fleet management solution and how it could basically save um, PTSC money by offering a, a, a proactive maintenance um, schedule for their buses. So this is just a, a screenshot of the presentation, but this was my idea. So you look at problems and how technology basically could solve them. So the program is accelerated, right? Just give me one sec here. All right, you guys seen it properly now? Awesome. It looks fine. Okay, thanks so much. So the program is accelerated, which means each level, we have three levels, level four, level five, and level six. It consists of eight months. So basically in level four, you have two semesters, which is four months long, right? And from there, and then from there, you move on to level five, which is two semesters, four months each, right? I'm gonna show the layout in a bit, but you can complete a degree in just over two years and I'll show you why it's just over two years as well. Let's go to the next. So the, the IT degree is very affordable and we, we do have payment plans. And we also partner with, with GMMB to offer student loans from GMMB at a, at a really good rate. So I'll get to the payment plans and the costing and stuff in a bit too. No problem, David. So how the program is structured. So the program, as I said before, the program have three levels, level four, level five, and level six. And these are, these are just an overview of the, the requirements to enter. So if you have CAPE, you automatically um, qualify for the program. Or if you do have two years, if you don't have CAPE, if you have two or more years of IT work experience, you are qualified or IT certifications. Or if you have three years general working experience with CSEC, right? In level five now, if you have a level four IT diploma or two plus years work experience with IT certs. And then at level six, if you have an associate degree or higher a HND or a level five IT diploma, or even six plus years in any work in IT field with IT certs, you can get you to level six. So I'll break down this a bit more a little later, but this is an overview of the units in the IT degree. So this is how level four, I'm gonna go through from level four to level six and show you how the semester runs. And we, we also gonna to touch a little bit on the semester breaks as well. So in level four, they are semester one, which lasts for four months. And then there's a the next semester, semester two, which is four months as well, which in total is eight months, right? Then level five is same thing. You have semester one, which is four months. And then semester two, which is four months as well, which is eight months in total. And guess what? Level six is the same thing. Semester one, four months, and then semester two is four months, right? If you have unit, yes, you can enter degree with unit one from in Cape, right? I had someone just recently in July, he entered the program with unit one Cape. So in level six is four months, right? So when you add up four months, well, eight, the, all three eight months, that's 24 months, right? But look at this, the university are um, introduced introduced a semester break in between level four and five and then level five and six, which means is a four months break between level four and five, and there's a four months break in between level five and six. So as I said, when you look at these years of study, it's really just 24 months or two years of study you're gonna do, but then there is an eight month um, break period that you need to do as well. So, from here now, if you start at level five, it's the same thing, level five of two semesters, eight months each, then level six, two semesters, which is eight months in total, and then there's a semester break in between, which is four months long, which should be doing 16 months of studies really, 
and four months break, right? And then at level six, if you just start at level six, it's just the two semesters, which is eight months in total. So you'll be doing eight months of study and no break, right? So you're probably thinking, what can I do during my break, right? So we do have some IT certification, um, Adobe Photoshop, CompTIA, A+, Web Design, and more. And we do have some personal development certification, which are project management, financial management, and even some business writing skills and stuff. And they all can be found on our website. And we offer a 40% discount during the semester break, right? But it's only valid for BSc IT students on the semester break. So if you want to make yourself more marketable and be a little more cutting edge, because if you look at it, almost everyone um, these days have a degree. But if you get some of these certifications that we offer, you have a slight, a slight advantage over the persons without um, these certifications. So I'm just going to the chat and answer some questions. Can I study program by CXC passes? Um, recently, the university kind of changed their requirements, right? So with, we, we, we found persons with CXC that had two years or more working experience and they got any program. We also had a student with some IT certifications, like example, CompTIA is recognized, Kevin. And some other programs, some online, like introduction to programming and these other stuff, and they got into the program with CXE, right? Anything else you want me to go over, Dana? I'm going to go over the, the, the requirements a little later. There are group projects. There are group projects to the, to, the, to the program, but when I did my group project, we were on lockdown, and we just used Zoom, and we just used the technology to, to basically meet and do up stuff. There's a, there's, there is a, a, a discount and I'm gonna cover that discount a little later. I'll have to check that mobile app development for you, right, Jaden? No problem. So in the degree, what will I learn? So in level four, you'll be learning, you'll be exposed to Cisco Academy with networking. So we'll be doing basically CCNA um, certification. We have been introduced to databases like SQL, Oracle, and these others. You will work with Microsoft Access, Oracle, Java, and Python programming as well. So there's a lot of programming in level four, and you'll be learning the, the principles or the fundamentals of computer science as well. In level five, we're gonna be doing user experience design and how the design will work on different devices. So basically, um, you can't have an application that works and looks really good on your laptop. And when you go on your phone, it needs to be represented really well as well. So this is where um, you, you take all those design into consideration. So also you're going to be learning a lot about um, color psychology, where you can create the look and feel of the application, bring out certain emotions for your users. And, and also level five prepares you for the interview room and assist you in thinking about your possible career path, right? So level six is where you're gonna do, you're gonna work on a lot of your um, presentation skills because you have a few um, video presentations to do, right? So basically, if you think about it, when you go to your job and you get hired, they'll probably ask you, hey, what do you think? What, 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 how can we um, enhance the, the job? How can you enhance certain deep departments with technology and you could now go do your research develop a powerpoint presentation and, and stand in front of your boss or even the directors and present your findings and this is basically what the, the degree does in level six as well you're also going to be starting and finishing your um, final report and your thesis and your final application as well which is an e-commerce store so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you some of the IT projects that we did that students did in the past. So this is an I, uh, a project someone did for <clears throat> level five, I believe. So this is the um, login screen. It shows up really fuzzy on my screen. I don't know if it's good on your screen. So this is basically a digital wallet and you can see how it lays out, how it laid out. You see you have your team down here. You have your color scheme, black, red, and white. 
and everything looks yeah it's a bit fuzzy i don't know it looks good it looked good this morning on on when i was looking through it but not it, it's kind of fuzzy here too so as you can see though it's laid out really nice and you can also see he did a, a, a design for his phone as well so this is how it looks on your laptop right you can get the idea of how it laid out and then it, this is how it looks on your phone very sleek and very clean this is another um this is actually someone final project he did an e-commerce store on art products so from here now people could actually see what the um the product is about and add it to cart even add it to the wish list and you can even see other products that they might be interested in this is another page showing the wish list that the, the, the user had so every time they click on this uh, to wish list, it shows up on, on this page, which is all this is right um, the front end and there's a database in the back end that contains all this information. He also um, integrated a, a chat bot to help persons with um, purchasing stuff on the store. And this is just his um, profile to edit your own profile. So I have one more video to show you guys. Name is Ives Levent and so this is another um, student's project. He basically designed this on Axio. So you can see his login screen and stuff. He's gonna log in. All right, you can create an account. So this is basically one of his presentation he's doing for his assignment. So I mute the audio, but he's actually speaking over the, the, the video presenting his application. So these are some of the things that you'll be doing. So you can see it's a password don't match. So you can actually develop all these um, layouts and these responses as well. All right. So you guys excited so far? Yeah? I can hear the roar. Yes, I can see that with those emojis. Um, can I develop it? Um, you can develop a video game after with the, with the knowledge you develop here. But there's no, the, 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 any, none of the assignments really call for a, a video game, really. Awesome. So. How can the IT degree, BSc, could fit in your life? How many assignments per level? All right. So is someone writing on my screen? <laughs> so basically, there are two assignments per module, and you'll be doing two units or two modules per semester. So each semester, we're doing four assignments, right? And if you check it, there's there are. Let me go back to the. Let me go back. So I'll go over the overview of this one here. So two assignments here. Well, actually, four assignments here, and then four assignments here, right? I'll get my right. Please appoint it. So there are four assignments here, and then four assignments here. So in all, it's really eight assignments for the whole level four, right? And then from here, there are eight again in level five, because you're doing um, four assignments here, because you're doing two modules per semester, and then four assignments here. So eight here again, and then in level six, same thing. So in all, there are 24 assignments in the um any program i'm going to cover the assignment and stuff a bit later but there are a few exams but not a lot right let me just jump down 
which are the projects. Right. So how does the Greek fit in my life? Because we know some of us are working and we have a lot to do. We have children. And yeah, how could I fit this in? So for in, to start, we have intakes every three, three times a year in February, June, and October. So when you're gonna sign up now, you'll be you'll be starting in October. And the unit delivery is basically two units per semester, right? And you have two hours of session per week per unit, basically. So you're basically gonna have like four hours of classes a week. And as 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 you was talking about before, you'll be assessed with typically two or three assessments per unit, right? The 15 week semester, which I think gonna be um, a bit less for next semester. So I'll update, update you guys on that. And then between semesters, about two weeks break. But last semester, there was about two to four weeks break, right? So initially, you get a little break in between each semester. Then this is the time table for October. It looks like a lot on this page, right? It's because there's a level four here. So I have classes on Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, level five. Both have classes. Um, new and continued students on Saturdays. And then level six students have classes Saturdays, Mondays, and Wednesdays. I want to show you. <clears throat> I want to show you. So I'm going to show you how the classes are in a bit. So if, you, if you're in level four, this is your classes. It looks a bit fuzzy now, which I don't understand why. But if you look, you have a class on Saturday, two hours from 10 to 8 to 10. Then you have a class on Tuesday. Let me get my laser pointer back out. There's a class on Tuesday from 6 to 8, and a class on Wednesday from 6 to 8. Right? Then on level five, you have classes only on Saturdays from around 10 to 12, and then from 1 to 3. Right? So ideally in level five, you only have one day of class. Then in level six, there are, there are, there are two sets of students in level six. There are students who are gonna start. So the starting students new to level six gonna be doing classes on Saturdays. So they'll have this unit on Saturdays and then from eight to 10 and then from 10 to 12 is another unit they're gonna do. Um, the continued students in, level, in semester two are gonna be doing a class on Monday, which is the undergraduate project for the, um, the assignment tutorial. And then Wednesdays, um, they're gonna have another class for their undergraduate project, which is the programming. But we advise students who are new to level six to enter this class in, on Wednesdays for the programming to get ahead in building the application. All of these classes are online. Yes, they are. They'll be online for now. We provide, a, a you'll be providing <clears throat> an option for face-to-face -face classes, but the majority, if majority persons stay online, we will go to online instead. So anybody have any questions about the schedule? Yes, oh, hello there. Uh, what, what, is the, uh, what is the, the advanced program, the advanced program? What do you mean by advanced program? In the level six, the, the, the schedule and the schedule. In level six? Yeah. So level six is really the last semester, the last level in the program. And right after level, the after, after you finish level six is where you get your degree, right? So level six takes eight months to complete and you need an associate degree or a higher a HND degree to complete the program, to enter level six. Anybody else had a hand up? Okay, great. So we can see how easily the program could fit into your schedule, right? Classes, mostly on evenings. And then Saturdays for level five and level six, only a few days for the week, but they are mostly, and all our classes are recorded, right? So if you, if you miss a class, you can go back and review the recording, right? Also to note, they might we will provide some assignment or special tutorials that may be an extra day of class for the week, right? But those are being recorded as well. Yes, when you complete level six, you will have your degree. 
pixels. Two pixels. So Jonathan, we are so concerned with at least that thing that had like two certifications from IT certifications with CSEC to get into the, 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 the level four, right? But we can also try and apply and see that what's their feedback and move the suit from there, All right? So we're going, we're going moving on to support. What support is available? On the university side, they have course advisors. Yeah, we're giving you course information and support and even with applications. They have academics, they have one-on-one -on -one support for your um, academics, writing and stuff and induction. Um, administrative, they, they, they provide letter registration, letters, journals, and student inquiries. You have online support, so you have the Brio portal. We have a study materials, study support guides, you can get your grades and your feedback, and even submitting assignments on Brio. And they have an online library where you could get journals, reading papers, and complementary resources, right? So this is all the, the support you get from university. So on the CTS side, now what support is available? So with the teams, we have a team of people, as I introduced earlier, we have is three of us, the program manager, program administrator, and even Mr. Ravi Aghanath. So for at times, we often give students advice. So some, some students come for us for advice on their assignments. And seeing that, okay, Mr. Sanjeev Nunu is also a part of the program. He's in level five. And seeing that himself and myself is our past students of, well, he's a current student, I'm a past student of the, of the degree. We will have experience in the units and the assignments and what the university is looking for. So we, we give our students advice on the assignments and even sometimes advice on other aspects on the program. So we provide information on the program from doing mitigation when they can't submit on time to access a university email and provide support for that. We help and assist by doing assignment reviews and provide extra tutorials for students to assist them on completing their assignment. So, people, so persons in level six would send me their assignment and I would just read it over and I'll get them feedback, right? We also guide them, we guide students on how to submit their assignment or even, I did a Zoom call session with a student and show them how to get information from Google, Google Scholar because we'll be using Google Scholar a lot and how to cite the information they got and how to write the Harvard reference as well. So we provide that one-on-one -on -one support for, for our students. Our team have first-hand experience with the program being that we, as I said before, we were past students or Sanjeev is our current student. So we can fill in a gap sometimes where you might feel lost. So being a student, I, I did feel lost at times, but now I know how the program runs and what is required. So I could fill those gaps for you. Um, we provide solution because we are solution oriented staff that always look for better with two things that are being done right now. And we give students direction and suggestions on their career path or even sometimes in their personal life as well. So this is about our the overall of this, the student support that we provide. Also, we do induction. So at the start of every semester, there's an induction, two classes of induction where we go through reference, um, harvest and references, and even some just academic workshops to get your writing skills um, up to the university level. So our, our teachers, our lecturers, they are cutting edge from university and they basically practice what they teach because they are, they are in the field. We actually have one person who he wrote networking books um, for IT. So he'd be teaching the networking course. We have Mr. Ravi Raghunath who was a, a database administrator before and he'd be teaching the database and stuff like that. We have Mr. Karan. Um, he basically is an IT consultant. He'd be involved in a lot of projects and stuff. So he'd be teaching the um, project management side of the course. So coming to this question, or someone asks, will there be exams and stuff? So how would I be assessed? So there are exams, but there are few. I can tell you there are about three exams and there are multiple choice, but the majority of the assessment you're gonna be going through are like coursework stuff, group and individual projects, portfolios, essays, and lovely presentations. Someone raise their hand. Hey, Dwayne.
Okay. So the majority of the assessments are uh, written reports and presentations, right? But there are a few exams in there. And we provide constant feedback and we also get advice from the lecturers. And we as well provide feedback the team, the BSC team. So how to pass a unit on, on progress, right? Guess what? The pass percentage for this, for each unit is 40%. So how do I get 40%? There are two assignments, right? One might work 30% overall, and one might work 70% overall. Say I didn't do as well in the first assignment, but my second assignment, I nailed it, and I, I, did, I got an A. Once the overall percentage is over 40%, you'll, you'll pass the unit, right? And in order to progress from one level to the next, from level four to five or five to six, you must pass at least three of the units in each level. Remember what I told you before, there are four units. So once you pass three units, with a grade of 40% or more, and you attain a grade at least 35% in the next unit, you will automatically pass the level and move on. So the, I repeat that again. If you have, a, one, in three units, you have 40% or more, and in the next unit, it didn't do all our grade because it, it probably didn't grasp the, the concepts as, as fast or quickly, but it got 35 or more, you will pass the level, right? So this is an uh, uh, honor degree and there are certain classifications in this honor degree, right? So there are first class honors, which is 70% or more. This is, over, this is um, overall per, um, average. Upper second class honors is between 60 and 69%. Lower class honors is between 50 and 59%. And there are third class honors between 40 and 49%, right? And guess what? Last February, we had 43 students, all the students in, Fe in February, who was in the last semester in level six, got first class honors. And then in October last year, we had 21 students getting first class, four students get upper seconds and one student again lower seconds. So you can see with our track record, we, are, we, we really help you guys up through our student support to, to do the best that you can. We, we basically pull out a gem in you that you didn't know exists, <laughs> right? So next question is like, what resources do I need? So we have Wi-Fi here available in CTS College. But we also have a Google Share Drive for, that can get all the core textbooks. But right now, mostly everyone is at home. So all you need is access to Wi-Fi at home or on a computer. That is really all that you need, right? So where would I graduate? So you have two options, because remember, you are part of University of Bedfordshire. You are a student there, and you're a student of CTS College. So you can, you have the option to fly to University of Bedfordshire, go to university across there and graduate, or you can graduate with us right in Trinidad. We're gonna have a ceremony. We have it every year in December at the Hyatt Hotel, All right? So just to note, you have two options. You can graduate at the University of Bedfordshire, or you can graduate in Trinidad with us in, in the Hyatt Hotel. Next question, how do I qualify? Right, so I'm going to just go over the qualifications. We went through it a bit, but it's a little more in depth. So level four, you can have one of the following, at least two years working experience, IT work experience, right? This can be you fixing computers home, having something part-time, your own little um, side hustle, fixing computers. Once you have key passes, you are automatically approved. Any tertiary qualification, so you can do another program somewhere else, like you could do a, a, a diploma in business or something to that effect, and you'll be able to qualify any IT certifications. With CSEC, you have two years working experience or IT certifications, right? So again, at least two years work experience in IT field, with you could pass, you could get in with CAPE. Any tertiary qualification, you could get in with IT certifications, or with CSEC, you have two years work experience, or with CSEC, they have IT experience. I believe with a level three diploma, yes, you can start level four, yes. So 
some evidence to show that w- 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 with your job experience, you must show a bit of evidence. So if you get a job letter to support your work experience, and then of course, academic certificates, the IT certificate, so a copy of your ID passport and a copy of your resume. For level five now, so any level for a, a level four diploma in qualification in IT, K passes with two years of IT work experience, a combination of IT work experience, at least two years, academic and or professional qualification, right? You can get into level five. So this is ID for someone who has previously completed a level four IT certification or person with a combination of IT and work experience. So you can do IT, yes. So last, actually this semester recently, we got someone who approved to start, then they had CTS CompTIA um, certificate. What makes up level four diploma? So um, a level four diploma, basically, that's how, how we have a level four in our program. It's not really a diploma, but there are some institution and some other um, places that have a level four diploma in IT. So it's just basically introduction, fundamental stuff in IT. So evidence again to do your, to do your, um, to show is a copy of a job letter, academic certifications, a professional certifications, your ID passport or your resume, right? So level six now, so you, we could possess any one of the following and level five diploma or uh, HND or associate degree in IT, a combination of IT work experience as well. So it must be at least four years uh, academic or professional qualification. And this is ideal for persons who have level five IT qualifications, such as, as I said before, diploma, the HND or associate degree, a person with extensive IT experience or possess IT certifications, right? And the same evidence applies. So what we could do as well, like you could send us all, anything that you have. I see someone has a, a diploma in computer repairs and maintenance, right? And we could actually apply for you to the level that, say that would be maybe level five because you probably have work experience as well. And um, we'll put through the applications and the university will give us feedback. So how to apply, right? You can complete the application form or as well, we can also help you with the form, right? You submit your, your CV, which or your, your resume and an ID. You submit a letter from your employer, a job letter, confirming a title and duration of employment, right? And the letter should be, um, because it's clearly specify it as a position, right? That you are, that you are permanent or full-time. Even if it's part-time, that's all right. Submit a copy of your transcripts and certificates. Could be as simple as taking a picture, a very clear picture of them, and, and, and send it to us. And we come and submit a copy of your IT certs as well. Right? So, this is the steps between application and starting, right? I'm going to go through this with you guys. So, so when an, a student applies via the application form, he said, We will go through the form, make sure everything is okay the BSC IT, the BSC team that is, and then we're gonna send it to the university, University of Bedfordshire. And then from there, we get feedback from university and they say, you're accepted, right? And they send a feedback via a letter of offer, stating which level you're gonna start at and when you're gonna start. From there now, when you accept, you, you sign the offer letter and you say you accept to start. And then you make a payment to CTS College, the registration and the tuition and stuff. So we're gonna go through the, those payments for you a little after. And from there, you start classes. Well, not the 25th of June, but it's gonna be the 1st of October, right? So these are the steps between starting, between applying, my bad, and starting class. Any questions? Okay, all right.
So let's go into the steps again. First of October. So this is an integral part of the, 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 the session. How much will it cost? So this is the cost of the IT degree, the, each level overall. So each semester, the approval takes roughly, I would say one month just to get the approval from university. Yes, I'll be sending the recording right after the session. No problem. So this is a cost overall. So there's a, there are three types of fee. There are registration fees, CTS registration, then CTS tuition. And then because we are a partner with the University of Bedfordshire, there are university fees as well, which are in pounds. So the registration is 500 per semester, right? Remember there are two semesters per level. So level four, there's a thousand others. Then each unit costs 2,000 for tuition, right? So in level four, again, there are four units, so it's 8,000, and then 150 pounds per unit, which really um, amounts to 600 pounds, right? And then level five, <clears throat> the same thing with tuition, um, registration. Tuition is a little bit more, and then your pounds are the same. Then level six, same registration, right? The tuition going up a little bit more again, but then look at the university fees. It's a lot more in level six. So just please note um, the um, university fees for level six uh, are a bit more. So the total cost is roughly around 56,000, right? I say roughly because we have pounds, um, um, yeah, the pounds payment from university fees and the exchange rate kind of goes up and down. So right now the rate is about 8.9. So it will be a little less than this. But if you look at how much, remember we looked at the, 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 the CSEC salary versus the BSC salary. And if you look within one year, you could actually get your return on your investment from doing your degree. Because you'll be getting 54,000 more with your salary with, once you have a degree. So you can see this as more of an investment than um, a, a, a huge payment really. So we do have a payment plan available and I'm gonna go through that now. So this is level four payment plan. The, the, the screen is a bit fuzzy, which I don't understand, but let's go through it. And again, I'll be sending this um, presentation as a PDF and the recording as well, right? So, it's, so they start the semester, you pay registration fee, you make a payment towards tuition, which is at thousand dollars. You make a first payment to university fee, which is a hundred pounds. So the total for the Saturday semester is really 1,500 pounds and 100, uh, 1,500 TT, sorry, and 100 pounds. Then second month, you have no more registration fee to pay. So it's just $1,000 towards your tuition, 100 pounds towards university fees. So you'll be paying 1,000 TT and 100 pounds, right? The third month, you'll be paying $1,000 TT towards tuition, 100 pounds towards university fees, and then the total for that month, the third month is $1,100, 1,000 TT and 100 pounds. And then for the last month, you already paid off 300 pounds for the semester, right? So the last month, all you pay is in the, the tuition. So that's just a bare flat um, $1,000 for the month, for the fourth month. And then it repeats again for the second semester. I do apologize that it looks fuzzy like this. I, I, I am unaware of why it, it, it's like this, right? So level five is along the same. As you can see, it's a bit clearer. It's the same picture though, but a bit clearer. So in semester one, tuition goes up a bit. So you have 11.25 for tuition, same $500 registration fee and um, 100 university fee, 100 pounds. So the total for the start of the semester is really 1600 TT, 1600 TT and $100, 100 pounds, right? So the second month now, because registration has always got, um, already went, you only pay in tuition fees, right? Then 100 pounds, then uh, the total for the month, you only pay 11.25 for tuition and 100 pounds for university fee. Then at the third month, it repeats the same thing, right? 
But then at the fourth month, Sinatra already paid for university fees. You only be paying tuition at this time. And then a whole, the same thing repeats again for the to second semester. So you can see how manageable and affordable it is to get a degree. Then at level six is along the same, um, the same concept. We have tuition fees every month. It's split up by, divide by four for every month, for the three months. You have um, registration and then you have university fees. All right. So we come to one of these um, exciting parts of the, this presentation is where we have a special offer for you guys. So all applicants will receive up to $1,000 off tuition per level. So there are three levels. Once you make, meet these requirements, you'll be able to get $3,000 off a BSc IT degree, right? So for October semester, you must submit your, app, your completed application form with all some supporting documents by Friday 22nd, which is Friday coming, right? So you can send it to bsc at, at ctscollege.com and semester registration, tuition, and university fees must be paid in full before the 16th of September, right? So just to repeat, it must submit an application form, which I'm gonna go through in a bit for, with you, right? Um, by the 22nd of um, July, which is next week, Friday, Friday coming, you can send it to bsc at ctscollege.com and the semester registration, tuition, and university fees must be paid in full by the 16th of September, okay? Then, when do I start? So the start day is only the 1st of October. But right now I just wanna go through the application form for you. So I have a blank application form in front of me. This is how the application form looks like, right? Give me one second. So let's go through the application form, right? Hello, you. Yeah. Um, I have to leave now. Um, is it possible that the information discussed uh, could be sent to me? Yeah, I have no problem with that. I also saw your message. I, no, saw your message, yeah. so I can send it to that email and stuff, right? All right, yeah. All right, thank you. No problem, Justin. Be safe. Right. Justin, safe. Be safe. <laughs> have a nice day. Okay, man. So let's go to your application form so you can put either a male or female here. A date of birth. So I'm just going to put my birthday. Right. Then your first name, last name. You don't have to put your password number here. You can put where you live. So I go live one to three streets. Road. Let's say Sando, right? But keep it short and nice. My number. Make make sure and keep your your application form will be sent in the email as well. Make sure and put your international code, your email address. So my email address, right? And that's, that's it really for this part. That's all that we need, right? Second part, country of birth. I born in Trinidad. Country of, this one here basically, basically means where you live and your present nationality, Trinidadian. Are you living in UK? No. Have you studied in UK? No. You don't need to put any of this for your visa. Have you been refused from any country? No. Do you tend to bring any family? No. Do you have any family or independence before in the UK? You can also click no if you like. Come down here. This part is already filled out for you. From here now, you can say, I want to start at level five. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly let's leave level five. And then we can put October 22 here. All according to which level you want to start at and the qualification you have, you can put it here. So you can put level four five or six, right? So from here now, this is this is where you provide your, your, your academic qualification. So if I went to secondary school, I can say secondary. I finished in 2015. The school, the, the, the institution is not your school. It's actually CXC, because mm -hmm. that's where your um, 
certificate came from. And you can say I have six CSEC classes and they are in English. Oops, I guess by English. Right, if you have K passes, you can actually add an X line. Also put secondary, put 2017 CXE and say, say seven K passes. Then you put English, that's one English again. Right, so if you have any IT qualifications, you could put IT here. And in 2018, I did my CompTIA. And I could put A plus here. And just put a dash and say passed. And put English. And you say in case you have a certificate, so you could put oh, an, a, a degree or anything like that. So you could put 2020. I could put UTT or University of um, Trinidad and Tobago or University of West Indies, right? And I could put diploma in computer um, engineering or something, right? And I could put English. Why am I cheap when I... So it's as simple as that. And even if you need help and you, you don't, you can't remember to fill in this information, we, will, we can also help you out, right? Really, really showing off my English here, way. So yeah. Um, from here now, this is really your English language requirement. You, you could put CSEC, right, in your English A. Um, the grade you got, so I could put grade three or two. And then the year, which is like 2000, and where well, I put up there, 15, 2015. And it, the form kind of does this, where it repeats over and over. There's no problem, don't worry about that. Work experience, as simple as just put in where you work, so your job title. So I'm going to put IT support, right? Technician. Oh. And where I used to work, I'm going to put. Um, Okay, so KFC, because it was in KFC, from what date to what time? It was here, simple as 2016, 2016, 2018, and it was full time. And that's it really. From here now, you say if you have any physical um, disabilities or medical condition, if you have, you say yes, you say no, okay. You can put agent here if you like, or even if you did search for them and you found them on Google, right? If you put agent here, you could put CTS college if you like. Right? And your references. So this this part is important, but it's not is it it they're not good the university is not gonna call anyone to tell them or ask them anything. It's just for um for them to, to keep on their file. So I was gonna put John Doe and then Jane Doe. All we need is their number. And that will suffice. We don't need any, any more information here. And but if you can't sign, we will extract your signature from your ID and put it here. And that's it for your application. So that's gonna go over one more time. Your name, first name, last name, either male or female, your date of birth, your, your address, your phone number, right? You don't need a Skype ID here, your email address, the country of birth, where you live exactly right now, the present nationality. You don't, if you have, if, you, if you're if living in UK, you could click, um, if you're studying UK, you can click accordingly here. Um, you don't need to put your current visa status. If you have been refused, you could put your stuff here accordingly. Here is already filled out for you. This is where you put which level you wanna start at and the month or the semester you wanna start. When you come here now, you can put secondary for your um, CSEC and K passes. You can put IT for your certification or the um, diploma stuff here. Then you can just state, simply state you have CSEC English. You have grade two, and that was in 2005, where you worked before. And the work experience doesn't have to be, uh, you went to the bank and it will hire you for eight hours a day and you, you work from this time to this time. You can also be a babysitter, right? Self-employed, 
and it could put from 2015 to 2017. And that was part time or full time, right? If you have any disabilities, you can say yes or no. How you have a university, Google search engine, Google Bing, anything. Or if you put Asian, you could put CTS College, references, and that's about it. Pretty straightforward. If you have dual citizenship, can you put both nationalities? If you like, but if you want us to keep it Trinidadian, it's up to you. I, I recommend you keep it as Trinidad, but you can put both if you like. All right. So when do you start? Is really the first, right. The first of October, right? And from here, we actually uh, finish with our presentation, with our session, and I will take your questions and I will try to answer them at the best of my ability. So any questions, you can show it up in the chat. I know persons have been showing up questions right through. What you can do as well, if you like, it will help us out a lot. We just want to verify your contact number and your email. So you can throw that up in the chat. You can private message me if you like. If you're the one person to get your contact, but you can message in the chat so I can, I can verify that we have your cor correct email and your correct um, phone number. What level could you start? It's all according to your um, up, um, qualifications and your experience. So we can chat after if you like. What I'm gonna do as well, I'm gonna throw up my number and Sanji's number in the chat. So you can copy and paste it there easily. I'm also gonna put up on, our sc on the screen. So you can see it. So you can take our information and give us a call, give us an email. So someone asks, what is the benefit of starting from level four versus straight from five or six? So level four is really more foundational stuff. You can start five and six and successfully complete a degree. Because I started level six and I was very successful in completing. But level four basically shows you um, the fundamental computer science, a little more about programming, even mobile use cases, personas, and these other stuff. You do have them in other levels, but in level four is where you'll be introduced to those aspects of it. Thank you guys so much for throwing up your contacts in the chat. So I have a question about SPCS, uh, BSC IT. Does CTS IT a better option? Does it cover more than your other local programs? What I can tell you is that from my experience, um, as a student, the support I got, and like I could have called Ravi on a Sunday morning and he answered and, and basically answered my questions. And, and he really, we, we, we also do provide that support. We, have, we get calls from students um, we really work with our students to help them um, solve problems with this, with their applications or with their assignments or even group work as well. So we go all out for our students. I can talk about our student support more than what it what really covers in the program versus SPCS. I'm not sure what um, their program covers. But in a nutshell, I probably could pull up the on our site, you will see the units. And this, this will be emailed to you as well, right? The different units in the program. So you can see the different units in the program and you can see you have software development where you'll be learning um, Python. You have fundamental computer science, you'll be learning networking and, and you're getting a CCNA um, certification here. Principle of programming, I believe is Java programming here. 
and system, computer system structure. This is actually where the networking and stuff is in computer science, they learn about the hardware and the, the software and operating systems of the, of the computer, how they interact and how they talk to each other and stuff like that. I'm just looking for your other hand questions. So in level five now, user experience design is where you actually learn about UX best practices and how to develop well designed websites. Because for instance, if you minimize a screen, you see how everything collapse. This is design, this is um, responsive design. So you'll be learning a few of these aspects and stuff in um, UXD. In information technology employability project is where you look at your possible career paths and you, you basically help you with the um, getting um, started or, or prepared for the interview room. Web technologies, as it would, as the name says, they're going to develop the um, developing web applications and system development and database is basically going to be doing, we can learn about best practices about databases and developing applications for that. IT advanced, inf I'm sorry, advanced IT, which is information technology. Here is where you'll be basically going to be a consultant to two companies. And you'll be looking at how to solve the solution, um, to solve the problems with IT, but information technology. Research methodology is where you're going to start your project proposal and your research for your final project, which is on your graduate project, which is an e-commerce application. And then social and professional project management is where you're going to be working in a, in a group, in a team, to look at a problem locally and, and using IT to solve the problem. So I look at um, the health sector and how um, they don't have a, a proper way of storing their, um, their clients' information, the data. So I look at a health information system and I presented that. My, me and my team presented that. So this is basically what the IT degree covers. It really prepares you. And what I appreciate about the degree, it really prepares you and helps you to look at the, I am the business side of the company and how to develop and, and better the business side because without business, there's no IT for real. And I really, really appreciate that. You don't have to contact the company and the, the uh, university is not gonna contact the company either. So mine was Ministry of Health for that so, um, social and professional project management. And I didn't contact, I got all the information online, which is secondary research. Even for AIT, I did it with PTSC, which, is, which I showed you in the, in the slides about the fleet management system. And yeah, you don't have to contact the company to make um, to, to get their permission or to do the research because it's very academic. It's academic papers you're going to be doing and it's not going to be published online. I hope this answers your question about the degree and what it covers, right? There are a bit more in, I, there's an email with a bit more in depth. You can probably reach out to me and ask me about each unit. I can send you that information. But guys, thanks so much for sending all your um information in the chat. I'm looking out for some more questions. I hope I don't miss any, miss any. The semester breaks are mandatory. You can't, the, actually, the semester breaks are mandatory. So the university basically sends us a list of students who are going on a break. And you, you can still continue the classes because we do allow persons to go into the class, um, look at the assignments, go through tutorials and stuff with the lecturer. But when you, when you actually do your, if you do your assignments and it's, it, there's no place to submit it because you wouldn't be enrolled into the unit, but there's no, there's no reason why you can't do the assignments and stuff from before and get ahead. That was a question posted by Joel. So Javon asks, what is the bridge program? So the university had a bridging program. And as of recent, as of recent, okay, as of last year, they stopped accepting persons into the program and putting persons straight into level four. And as of recent, their access, the, the set of the bridging program is no longer offered. So there's no more bridging program. So what we could do in the meantime as well, we can actually, um, we are actually in conversation with the university asking them, so with person with CSEC, what should they do to get into the program? Because we saw a person with CSEC with IT um, certification that they did, 
and they got into the program, right? So you can do some IT certifications like A+, and we even have like web design, because I would recommend these two programs. We have A+, right? And we also do have web design. Okay, we do know a lot of HTML, CSS, and jQuery stuff in the program itself. So you can get ahead and learn about this stuff and you can apply with these certifications. I wouldn't recommend to do CCNA because the program does have CCNA in, the, in it. All right, so you can start with A plus if you like, or A plus and web design. Thank you so much, um, Samuel. Any more questions, guys? I'm I'm enjoying this party session. I get to hear from you guys. Hi. So, hi. Um, like I said, it has CCNA in it. Would we get any CCNA certification, or is just that you're covering stuff on CCNA? Actually, you'll be actually going on um uh, Cisco Academy and going through every module on this on CCNA and doing the exam. There's also a practical exam where you'll be using with packet tracer and you'll be given the certificate when you complete. So we do cover it in class as well, like the, the, the details for the exam, but you, you're required to go on Cisco Academy and read up on each module and do the actual, actual um, small assessments after each module. And then there's two um, exams in the end. One is a multiple choice exam and one is a packet tracer exam using packet tracer. What um, if you have the, the CCNA situation? All right, so if you do have it and it's still valid, we can actually ask the university if it's possible for you to be exempted from it, or you could just get the, the, the um, what is called those? The credit for it already. The CCNA exam is, is included with the program. So you, once you pay for the program, does someone ask, do we have to pay for the CCNA exam? Once you pay, and, and a part of the program, the BSC IT, you don't have to pay for that exam. That's included. Um, a plus, you must be certified from CompTIA or C. I've seen someone with uh, the use CTS certificate, CompTIA A plus, and they go through. So do you don't necessarily have to go to the CompTIA to do the exam. Hey, doing no problem. Guys, this is basically to the end of the session. If you don't have any questions, you can leave. But if you want to stay back and ask any questions you like, I'll be happy to answer them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop recording here. So there are some person might be a little shy to ask questions with a recording on. So I'm just going to give you guys the opportunity, right? Thank you so much, Dave. So guys, have a great day. I'm going to stop recording now. Have a great day. And I hope to see you. I'll be I'll be calling you very soon. As of Monday, I'll be calling you just to follow up with you, right? If you need any help or assistance. Guys, have a great day. Take care.